I know this is going to be a wake-up call for many teachers who have not embraced technology and the internet, but I'm, I'm going to invite you to join me. And I'd like to start off with a quote of a husband of a colleague of mine in America who said, I'm enough of a realist to understand that I can't reach every child, but I'm more of an optimist to get up every morning and try. And as teachers, that's what we do. We get up every morning to try and turn those light bulbs on and inspire children. But if you think about it, not everyone has the same tools. Not everyone has the same equipment. And classrooms are evolving on a regular basis. If you take a look at the photograph there, you will see Victorian times. They used to use little ink pots and little quills. Then we moved on to slates. And then, of course, we moved into classrooms. No more slide rules and no more log books. We have calculators and pens. And don't forget that very fancy piece of equipment, the overhead projector. <laughs> But that has now been shifted away, and we are moving into classrooms with interactive whiteboards, where whiteboards can be touched, you are connected directly to the internet, and your finger is the mouse. And you can imagine how that enriches the classroom and makes the lessons come alive. So some teachers have not embraced the internet yet, and they're still stuck in the outernet. And there is still scope for the outernet. You'll see a lot of the things that you can relate to, but we have to admit one thing, that the internet has indeed actually revolutionized the educational system. But sadly, in South Africa, if you look at our context, not all schools are there yet. We have schools that are under-resourced. We have schools that are overcrowded. We have schools that are understaffed. And that is a sad predicament in South Africa. But that will change. It is improving. And I think that the internet is going to be the emancipator. Students will have instant access to data, they'll be able to network socially, and of course do everything else in between. But the world is changing at such a rapid pace, as you've already heard, that the top 10 in-demand jobs of 2010 did not exist in 2004. Right now, we are preparing our students for jobs that don't exist with technologies that have not even been invented. In talk, in, when we want to talk about the reach of the internet, to reach 50 million people, it took radio 38 years. It took TV only 13 years. We're talking 50 million people. The internet took four years, Facebook took two, and of course, Google Plus took one. But that's nothing. On the 5th of March, a group called Invisible Incorporated, Invisible Children Incorporated, put a, a video clip on YouTube about Coney 2012, a very controversial video clip, and in its first week, it had 32 million views. By the end of, I think by yesterday, there were 91 million views, and on Vimeo, an extra 18 million. That's quite a reach. So where am I going with all of this? In 2011, I saw an article on the internet about a t uh, uh, an engineer who came from a very poor village in Bihar, India, and he started a school called Chaitanya Gurukul. And because he was based on the other side of India, he started conducting lessons using Skype. And that got me excited. So I then contacted him and said, I would like to do that too. And within a week or two, I was teaching his classes in a remote village that, you must understand, the village has got no electricity. So that school is run off generator. And this gentleman, Chandrakant Singh and his colleagues, they've put money together to put technology into the school because they feel that is where the playing fields are going to be leveled. And you'll see a little video clip of me teaching a class. This is the first class that I taught at the school. And you'll notice the bandwidth is not so great. And that is a problem at the moment in some rural areas, but that will change. It will certainly improve. So in 2012, I set myself some goals. I decided I want to teach 100 international classes. I want to make sure that I apply the lessons here in South Africa. And I want to encourage all of you to join me. Right now, we are only halfway in the year. I've taught over 185 classes. I certainly have already started doing this stuff in Cape Town, and I'm going to definitely be encouraging you all to join me. And here are a few examples of some of the projects that I've been doing. I've challenged some students in America to try and fold a $10 bill in half 10 times, and if they could, they could keep it. Fortunately, they couldn't, because you should know what the exchange rate is like. <laughs> um, I got my colleague, Dr. Don Thomas, who is an astronaut, to speak to some students while he was down in Grahamstown, and this is what he had to say. This is Don Thomas, and yeah, it's a little scary. I, I went into space four times, and people sometimes say, hey, was it scary the first time you went? And I said, yes, it was so scary the first time, second time, third time, and fourth time. 
And that was the view from the classroom when they were interviewing us. Now, what does a teacher's conference in Illinois, USA, have to do with a Cape Town family maths evening in South Africa? And that is, I brought them together. I invited the delegates at the conference, and there's Teresa and David, two of my colleagues from overseas. They joined in. I took them for a little bit of a walk around. They got to speak to the teachers. They got to interact with the students, and they got to see how a maths evening should be run, and they took that back with their colleagues and shared that at the conference. Of course, I do a lot of brain teaser sessions as well. That's one of my passions. I like to share the idea that brain teasers can be fun. It doesn't matter which country. It doesn't matter which city. It doesn't matter which language. Brain teasers are always something that people love to engage in. And uh, in fact, this school over here in Georgia, the teacher uh, is an ex capetonian so we have a lot of things that we like to chat about. I then got some students in Denmark to compare what they get in their lunch boxes with students here in Cape Town. So they actually opened up their lunch boxes and showed us what they get. And here's what they asked our kids. Do you only have sugar things in your lunch? Do you only have sugar things in your lunch? The reason they asked, do you only have sugar things in your lunch, is because in Denmark, no sugar is allowed in the school. And when they saw the lunch boxes of the kids that I was teaching, chocolates and chips and all the good things, breakfast for champions, they were quite uh, envious. I was then asked to conduct a project where kids in South Africa and Cape Town were communicating and doing cultural exchange with children in Israel. There was dancing, there was singing, there was poetry reading, instruments, absolutely fascinating stuff where you actually get to exchange cultures. You can see the, the broad range of schools that I'm teaching at. Some of them literally are starting from uh, kindergarten, going all the way up to grade 12. And then, of course, my daughters love joining in and surprising me and the students during lessons. I sometimes even teach at 3.30 in the morning. And that's what we call real dedication. So then I launched a project called Cafe Dilemma, where I get to be the waiter and I present a menu of different controversial topics, abortion, capital punishment, uh, same-sex marriage, and I get a few adults who are teachers from around the world, and I ask them to stir the pot and put points in for and points against, and then we have a little bit of a robust discussion and argument. And this is very popular, and they've asked for many more sessions, so we'll investigate that further. I asked a TED speaker, Jeremy Gilley, who is the founder of Peace One Day, to join in with some high school students and talk to them about his initiative of having peace on the 21st of September around the world. And here's what he had to say. Uh, and we didn't do anything ourselves, and don't blame government. That's the whole point. We have to be involved in the peace process. This day is for us, it's not for governments. And so, you know, I'm delighted that your school has taken so much interest in this, you know, and that, you know, by working together, you know, we can create peace one day. Um, this is my good colleague, Colleen Addison. She's a teacher in New Jersey. And she asked me as a special favor, could I please send her some information about apartheid in South Africa? So I put together a short video presentation, nothing different to this one. And I interviewed my domestic worker, and I interviewed a principal at a high school in Cape Town, and I asked them to give their personal accounts of apartheid. The movie was made, it was uploaded to the internet, and 10 minutes later, it was played to an assembly of 1,000 kids. That is what global collaboration is all about. And of course, Colleen also does a few favors. She reads some stories to my kindergarten kids, and they absolutely love her accent and her stories. Um, so yes, I, it's not just me alone. I'm, I'm not some person who just invented all of this. There are a group of educators that I meet with on a regular basis. We use Google Hangout, which means we can have up to 10 people having a chat at the same time, sharing ideas, learning about things. And I'm, any of you over here are welcome to join in on these conversations. Technology that comes out is fantastic. The friendships that have been formed have been phenomenal. And you'll see an example over here, Reinhardt, who's from Germany, his daughter is actually coming down to Cape Town next month to do a, an internship at Red Cross Children's Hospital based on our connection and our relationship. So at the end of the day, you see all these different schools all over the world. It's really about collaborating and bring them into the classrooms. Very remote schools, some schools literally have only got 18 students in the middle of New Zealand. This could be the world's first panorama photograph that I've taken over Skype. I took a series of photos and stitched them together. I love trying different things. And this is what the students see on their side of the screen. They get to stare at my ugly mug for the entire duration of the session. So now, I then applied this in Cape Town. I went to Google Air 2 for one of our projects, and I got the kids in grade 7 to talk to fellow grade 7 students. And this is the first time they've ever seen the internet or spoken to kids in another country, and they were taken aback. They could not believe it. So this is the first of many, many other sessions that will be coming up. So now, 
the big question is, what else have I been up to and what else am I going to be roping you guys into? Um, I, I do weekly interviews on Indonesian radio where I get to chat about things that are related to education. I run lots of teacher workshops, whether it's on the internet or live. Um, obviously, I do student evaluations, but I do it voting on Google Forms. And I also do Mystery Skype, where I tap into a school somewhere in the world, put on a funny accent, and they've got to try and work out where I am using various internet tools. But of course, there are more benefits to the internet than meet the eye. If you are a student and you are absent, can you imagine checking in with your teacher and getting the homework assignment from your teacher? If you were a teacher and you invited a, a guest speaker or someone inspirational, you can make your subject matter come alive. If you were teaching French, you connected with a French school, they speak to you in French, uh, in, in English, you speak to them in French, that's what it's about. Cultural exchange, you saw what I did there with the kids in Cape Town and Israel, they swapped and shared culture. Streaming your PTA meetings live so that all parents could take part if they can't make it. And of course, if you can't be at the meeting, chat one-on-one -on -one with the teachers. But more importantly, it's about you getting involved and joining forums and learning about what is going on out there. Just empower yourself. But I will say one thing. The internet will never and should never, ever replace a good teacher. Yes, it will help for schools that are short of teachers, and it will make the subject matter richer, but it will never replace a good teacher. So, of course, what am I planning for the rest of the year? I mean, there's only a couple of months to go. I want to start getting classes where I have one teacher and several disadvantaged schools all getting a live class simultaneously. I'm launching my world tour project, and if you go to the TEDx Cape Town Ed website, you will see the links to those. Um, I want to teach on every single continent at the same time. I don't think it's ever been done before. I want South African kids, Israeli kids, and Palestinian kids to talk about issues that are on the ground, what is really going on. I want children at Red Cross Children's Hospital to chat to other children at other hospitals to find out how things are really going on. So I want you to join me on my journey and my friends, and I'm hoping they're here. Can you introduce yourselves? Good morning, Cape Town, South Africa. This is Paula Novel talking to you from New Orleans, Louisiana. I am a fourth grade math and social studies teacher who loves to use all sorts of Web 2.0 tools to connect my class and make them global citizens. Uh, Reinhardt, could you speak? Hello, my name is Reinhard Marx from Germany calling to South Africa. I'm teacher of grade 7 to grade 10 and leader of the one and only radio station for students around the world. Uh, I'm a teacher for chemistry, um, mathematics and media. And, and Sean? Hello Cape Town, this is Sean McCutcheon from Ontario, Canada calling. I'm a grade two teacher here at a rural school. We're in the heart of cottage country. Uh, a lot of my students haven't been to major cities before, so we try and use tools like this to connect around the world. Okay, thank you. And then you can just wave and say goodbye to everyone. And I encourage all of you to please join me in my mission to make the global classroom come alive. Thank you very much.